Hi, I would like to show you how to use Plinker to do a quantitative trade analysis. So Plinker, uh, so Plink uh, has its own example on the website, which looks something like exactly like this. Uh, you can do this with Plinker to call all, to create all these files and run them from the command line. But of course, you can also work with the ta tables uh, in memory in R. Uh, that's what we're going to do here. Uh, so without all these uh, f trouble things with files that, that can go wrong and so on, uh, which makes your code harder to read, we're going to detect associations with a quantitative trait uh, in a way easier way. So to do that, uh, well, you need to have a Plinker and Plinker uses Plink. And if Plink is not installed, it will give you an error message. Um, and you can easily install Plink by using install Plink. Uh, actually, you can install multiple Plink commands using um, multiple Plink versions by using install Plinks. So let's get to work. So we need to detect associations for a tra single trait. And for that, we need, uh, we need to know at least three things. One, we need to have, uh, we need to know the mapping table which contains the locations of the single nucleotide polymorphisms on the DNA, on the chromosomes. So we need to have that. Um, we also need to know the pedigree. The pet usually it's uh, stored in a pet file. Uh, it's a pedigree table which contains the pedigree of the individuals and what, uh, what their SNP values are, what their genotypes are. Uh, we also need a third table um, which contains one or more phenotypes of the individuals so that we can, yeah, that we can map the genotype to the phenotype. I also need to specify a minor allele frequency. Um, to get all those, there's a function in Plinker called get test association quantitative trait parameters. Um, and that just gives you um, all of these uh, in one line. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to show all four of them uh, and then we're going to do an association. So in these uh, parameters, a SOC Qt param, so the name is named after uh, the SOC function by Plink. Um, this is how the map file looks like, or actually this is how it looks like in data. Uh, and that's what you want. You want to have it in, in memory in a table instead of in a file, so you can read it more often. So there's some pretty printing around this. So we have two SNPs apparently, at both at chromosome one, at base pairs one and two. Uh, their position in centimorgans is unspecified. That means that's what the zeros mean. The pedigree table, usually stored in a pet file, looks like uh, this. It's a bit bigger than my screen, so I need to go left and right a bit. Um, so we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six family ideas. Within the family, um, we have one individual with ID one, so they're all unrelated. Uh, father and mothers are is, is, is ignored. Their sex code is one, which I think is a male. The phenotypic value will be completely ignored. So Plink does that. I will do that uh, because it doesn't make sense to put it here uh, when we have a phenotype table for exactly that. So this will be ignored. And the last four columns are for the two SNPs, um, the, the two uh, deployed values. So um, individual, this individual, is haploid for A at uh, the first SNP, whereas the fourth individual is homozygous for T at the second SNP. So the phenotype table um, needs to have the same, close to the same buildup as the pedigree table. So here we have all the six individuals again, um, and here we put the phenotypic values. And the reason we do it, we use the phenotype table over putting it there is that it makes more sense to put the phenotypes in a phenotype table uh, and then adding them to a pedigree table. Uh, so this is more or less the pedigree table is more or less the genetics, uh, whereas the phenotypes are the phenotypes. Um, so by default, the phenotype, the, the, the trait that is uh, clearly artificial here is called phenotype uh, value. Uh, we're going to rename this to trait X because we'll be not only doing a, a genetic association for, for one trait, but we'll actually do two in this example. So, well, we need to also, lastly, but not least, we need to specify the minor allele frequency, abbreviated as MIF, 
Uh, by default, it is set to 0.05 in this testing parameter set. So uh, this is how you do an association. You call a soc cute, which means associate quantitative trait. You need to put in association for quantitative trait parameters. And here we get a table uh, of the results. So the first column is added by Plinker, but the rest of the columns are uh, created by Plink. That's why the uppercase uh, character is everywhere. Uh, here's the legend, um, but the trade name is added here. So in both both these snips, so there are two snips. Uh, snip one explains the data better than snip two, as in the phenotypes. Um, and I, I'm not going to go into it, but it's both related to trade X. So what we're now going to do, we're going to do multiple trades. And this is very simple. Um, so we already have our asoc cute params, our association for quantitative trait parameters, uh, which has a phenotype table. And this phenotype table, we're going to add another trait called trait Y. And uh, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to make the, the, the square uh, series from it. So now our phenotypic table has two traits instead of one. Uh, this is linear linkage is exponentially increasing. And then we can use exactly the same code to let Plink detect the associations. And then in that way, um, it does this individually. So you could just, of course, use a for loop uh, and use both traits separately. But here you can get both associations in one go. So that's all that I wanted to say about how easy it is to do a uh, quantitative trait association with Plinker, which it feels easier to do than just using Plink, because you work directly on the tables. And the Plinker in the end creates those files, a desk called Plink, it, it checks the output, those kind of things. So I feel this is the, the more, um, the, the, the easier way to go. Um, so that's it. Well, Plink is still an experimental phase, so things will change. But if you have a fun use case, I uh, would be happy maybe um, maybe you are lucky that I put it in. All right, that concludes it, and I wish you a very good day. Bye.